Welcome back out to the greenhouse here. It is absolutely freezing outside. We're sitting maybe 10, 11 degrees or something outside. Very little sunlight. We're in winter where you never know what time of day it is because it's always gray. So trying to operate our solar powered systems, it really makes a difference what system you're trying to run. As you can hear water kicking on back there. And our little pond waterfall is overflowing and then stopping and then flowing and stopping because of the draw on those systems. Now today I wanted to come out and just give a review on all of our little 12 volt DC fans, the little square box fans. It would be like a PC, a computer fan, but I find a ton of uses for them in the greenhouse when they produce them to be waterproof, uh, dust proof, and heat resistant. So we put these to the test over the last couple years for sure, pushed them to the max, and I wanted to give a review on them today. Now if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing. I can see my breath a little bit. I've had the doors open. I've been kind of coming in and out here, so I just kept all my tunnels covered up. And it is so cold outside that I hate to even leave the greenhouse, but I'm trying to get things done and get things situated. So today I'm out here just absolutely making a mess in the greenhouse. Oh, see my son's fish here. Glad to see they're active. We've been rolling this poly over it at night and pulling it out when we come back out here. Just as a little extra step of precaution. So, as I said, we're making a huge mess. I've got ash and stuff. I tried to clean up a little bit, but I'm pulling all the bricks down. I cleaned all of the ash out of here. We've got a nice bucket to make a bunch of bricks and random stuff with, so stay tuned for those videos. So I had just started this fire, so our little Peltier device fan is just getting up and going. And I've got these two fans back here. Now these are the ones I want to review here. So. Just clicking those on you can see this one is wobbling around now this was just a device I had built to move a little bit more heat around the stove itself and push it off so all of the flags of these bricks the holes were lined up and we were blowing air through there you just couldn't see it this thing is purely saturated with greenhouse dust and dust from our bricks and stuff so that can be cleaned. I'm not too concerned with it being dirty as long as it still operates and it doesn't throw it off balance. So with this one, you can see we are missing a blade here. And here is said blade. So these things have lasted for, what, three years or so? This one itself has been up above this exhaust for at least two years. So I had this piece of metal basically wedged up underneath just like this and it had a little gap in there, so we had a little bit of buffer from the direct heat onto the fan. We wanted the heat to rise up to the actual piece of ducting here. So that allowed us to push a bunch of hot air and move the hot air from all of these thermally active bricks and our piece of metal. We were pushing it through the entire greenhouse here. All right, so we dismantled that because we are going to be taking this one down. Obviously it is out of balance and it had broken. So I was incorrect. It had been four years that we had been operating these. So just with a simple flip of the switch, doesn't like to be off kilter, but this one is operating on the same system as our compost heater and our geothermal. So we're able to run one, two, three, four fans all off of the same single solar powered system. So I guess I should state that they are 12 volt, uh, 140 millimeters, like five and some odd inches. And as far as usage goes, they are putting about 5 watts. It's 4.8 watts of usage per hour while they're operating. So 1, 2, we've got 10 watts, uh, 3 watts there, 3 watts there. So what, 16 watts of power off of a 100 watt solar power system. So even on those days that are cold and cloudy, very limited solar activity, we're able to achieve movement like today where it's absolutely freezing got a little bit of snow dusting and absolutely no sunshine whatsoever hopefully we get some here before it actually goes down and sets but i doubt it it's that time of year i'm gonna have to unwire these i soldered and shrink wrapped these connections i just wired those two fans up together onto one switch so i could turn them on and off as i'm using the stove so 
didn't want those to constantly run. There was no need for it other than solar banking. Any sun that hits these bricks will warm them up and thus push that off. But it's more benefit when the fire is actually running and that's more energy to operate our two main systems. So the functionality of these fans themselves are very versatile. Now the durability is there. Now this only broke because it was above a 700 degree stove or something, you know, 500 degrees or whatever the stove exit would be. I had a little bit of buffer there, but not much. I mean, we've got all of our boarding, our cement boarding all the way around, fire retardant stuff. That way we don't have to worry about catching fire. We've had this in here for like three years now. So being able to operate all these fans, like I said, these are four years old. This one finally gave out. That one's still running just fine. Now we've got a five, six year old fan right there along with that one. And as far as functionality on those, they are well worth the money. I spent like $40 on the pair of those. And I consider that well worth it because they are larger and they push quite a bit more air than these smaller ones. Now this is like three and a half to four inches or something like that. And then that would be five inches or a little bit over five inches. So the functionality is there and there's many, many uses for these little solar powered or DC powered fans in the greenhouse. Oh man, speak of the devil, here comes a little bit of sunlight. Not warm, but it's a little something. So we've been operating our compost heated system basically ever since we set up the greenhouse. Take a look at that. We got some sprouts coming up there. Quite interesting. So we've been using these little 12 volt powered fans. Very simple setup. I mean, it's not pushing the 88 cubic feet per minute that it says it is because we've got so much friction and turbulence with these kind of tubings because the inside looks just like the outside so it's constantly swirling around but we are pushing a decent amount of heat I think we measured about 85 degrees coming out of there we're pushing maybe like 80 some degrees out of our water when it's running our tank is sitting maybe 70 72 I took all the measurements earlier when I was out here just checking things out I really wanted to come out here today and discuss these fans before I rearrange things and set up some other type of heat moving system off of this stove. And I wanted to give a review on those little guys because these have been operating for years upon years now. So they are well worth the money and worth the investment. So we absolutely push this fan to its limit. This is the blade that's missing there. And this thing still runs, it still moves, it still functions, and it's been in a very high stress, high heat situation for years, like three or four years. So it's quite interesting to see the longevity on things like this. So this is the piece we built. This is just a four inch connector and I tapped it in, bolted it on. And these were my little brackets to attach to the wall there. A very simple DIY to be able to catch and push a little bit more heat from the greenhouse stove. I was talking about wattage and usage and how much we can really piggyback off of one system. So with this being about 5 watts and our small geothermal and compost heating, the smaller little fans being about 3.2 watts or something, this 130 cubic foot per minute fan is pushing a whole lot more. So this thing is two and a half amps and we've got a 12 volt. So amps times volts is going to give us about 30 watts or something. So logically pushing 30 watts of power to this one fan is double of what we're putting to all of the other fans. Pushing 16 watts to power all four of those fans around this side of the greenhouse when we could power just this one with double the power. So this thing is well worth the money. It works great for the purposes that I need it for, but it's really not feasible in winter when you're not getting the most energy. We might be getting 50 watts of power from the sun through the clouds or something. And even on a fully sunny day, we're probably not getting what we fully could. So using the most minimal systems is the best bet. And all of these little fans here, 
There is so many that you can choose from. There's many options and many uses for all of these fans. We usually do test all of this stuff out and give it the best run that it can. And a lot of these little systems are proving to be quite beneficial to the greenhouse. So we have found quite a bit of success with the smaller fans. Not to say that a larger fan couldn't be purposeful if you had a larger system to back it up to power it. But doing things as cheaply as I possibly can, we've basically just ended up using all of the smallest little things that we could acquire to operate these systems and found success. So just trying to share all of this with you guys. We'll try and link all of these fans in the comments or description here so everybody can check out their own. Now, we don't get paid from anything. We're not sponsored. So these are just things that I've found that I've bought that seem to work for us. So we've got this fan here and you can see this piping here. That'll be the next video coming. We're going to pull some data from this little fan system here. So we've got this tubing going to another one of those fans there. And I've got myself some more aluminum ducting there. So we should be able to reroute. I'm going to route it into the tunnels, see what kind of flow and heat and stuff we can get. And then we are going to try and route it into our geothermal see what kind of heat we push out, compare it to a normal day, do some data collection and share all of that. So there's a lot going on all the time. I feel like I'm always just saying, yeah, there's something else coming because it usually is like that. So I've also got to break ground and try and get my windmill post in the ground and anchored and it's just frozen outside. So we've got a lot to do as far as work goes. And if you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments and thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.